for the given uniformly charged ring of linear charge density plus 10 nanocoulomb per meter, the electric field in y direction at point P is. So we have a charged ring. On the axis of the ring, there is a point P. We are interested in the y direction, the electric field in the y direction, which means perpendicular to the axis. All right, in order to do that, we can do this very simply using a symmetry argument. All right, what is the symmetry argu uh, argument? Let's choose two small charge elements, which are diametrically opposite, okay? So due to this DL, the electric field at this point would be in this direction DE. And due to this DL, the electric field at this point is going to be in this direction DE. Why the magnitudes are going to be the same? Because DL and this DL will have the same charge because it is a uniformly charged ring. And the distance between the charge and the point at which the electric field has to be calculated is the same. So the magnitude of electric field is going to be the same, okay? So if this angle is theta, this angle is also going to be theta by symmetry. So if we resolve DE, we'll have one component D cos theta like this and another component D sine theta like this. Similarly, similarly for this DE, we'll have one D cos theta like this and one D E sine theta like this. That becomes very clear that this D E sine theta and D E sine theta will get canceled and the net field would be 2 dE cos theta in what direction? In the x direction, all right? So using this symmetry argument for a charged ring, what we see is that the net electric field is along the axis and perpendicular to the axis, the electric field is zero, all right? So what will be my answer? Zero. And what, is, what will be the correct option? Option C is going to be my correct option. For the given uniformly charged ring, magnitude of the net electric field at point P is. Okay, so we have a charged ring and it is uniformly charged, very important. And we have to find the electric field at an axial point, all right, at a point on the axis of the ring. So what is the key concept involved here? The electric field due to a uniformly charged ring at a point on the axis is given by E is equal to KQR upon under root of capital R square plus R square to the power three by two. So capital R is the radius of the ring and R is the distance of the point from the center of the ring. All right. So all, all we have to do is make the basic substitution and find the answer. All right. So let's start the substitution. Now, in order to find Q, what we'll also have to do here is that we'll have to use lambda into 2 pi r because we have been given lambda, which is charge per unit length. So the total charge on the ring, ring would be given as charge per unit length into the length of the ring. And what will be the length of the ring? 2 pi r or the circumference. All right. So can I write EX is going to become K into R and then for Q I'm substituting lambda into 2 pi r. Is that correct? And divided by we'll have R square plus capital R square to the power 3 by 2. All right. So let's start substitution. So K K here is 9 into 10 to the power 9. What is lambda? Lambda here is 10 nano coulomb per meter. So 10 but multiplied by 10 to the power minus 9. SI units, very important. So this done, this done, multiplied by small r. What is small r? This distance, which is 4. Multiplied by capital R. Where is capital R? This is the radius of the ring. So that is 3. And multiplied by 2 pi divided by small r square, which is four square plus capital R square, which is three square to the power three by two. All right. Now here, this is four square plus three square. We know this is a Pythagoras triplet. So this is going to become what? This is going to become five square. Okay. And then we have under root. So that will make it five. And then we have cube. So that is going to make it 125. Right, so we have calculated that right here. All right, so let's see what are the things that are going to disappear. So this 10 to the power nine, this 10 to the power minus nine, gone. And then we have this five and we'll have 25 over here. And then we'll have two over here. All right, so what are we left with? We are left with nine multiplied by three, multiplied by two, four, two. So that is two into four, eight, eight into two, 16 multiplied by 3.14 divided by 25. All right, so we have here 48 multiplied by 9, 
Okay, so quickly let's do 48 multiplied by 9. So that 9, 8, 72, 7, 36 and 7 is 43. And this will have to multiply by 3.14. All right, to ease the calculation, I'm multiplying it by 3.1 itself. So 432 multiplied by 3.1 is going to give me 234 and this is going to give me 326, 339, 3412. So this will become 2913 and then 3 here and we have a decimal over here. And then what do we need to do? We need to divide it by 25. Okay. So a small thing I can do here is I can assume this to be 1340 and then I'm multiplying and dividing it by 4. Why? Because denominator will become 100. So this becomes 400, 4416, 4312, 131, 41415 divided by 100. And finally, after a bit of calculation, we are left with 53.6 Newton per Coulomb. All right, let's look at the answer. So the option, so we have calculated an approximate answer. So obviously there'll be some difference, but the closest we are with the options is option B, 54.3 Newton per Coulomb. And that is going to be my answer. All right, so options B is my correct option and that's it. For the given uniformly charged ring, magnitude of net electric field at point P is. So we have a uniformly charged ring and P is a point on the axis. Now here what we need to notice is that small r is 10 meter and capital R is 1 millimeter. So we can see that small r is much, much greater than capital R. All right. So in this situation, the key concept here is that the electric field due to a uniformly charged ring at a point on the axis is given by kq by r square, where small r is much, much greater than capital R. All right. So if you are wondering how was this derived, let me show that to you as well. So on a point on the axis, the electric field is given as kqr upon capital R square plus small r square to the power 3 by 2. Now, since small r is much, much greater than capital R, this can be neglected. So this becomes kqr upon small r cube. Hence, this becomes kq by r square, which basically means that if the point is very far away from the ring, then the ring behaves as a point charge. Absolutely. So you don't need to remember any special formula for this. Okay. So if the distance is very, very far away, then the ring is going to behave as a point object or a point charge. All right. So using this, let's solve this question. So we have electric field is equal to kq by r square, but Q will have to substitute as lambda into 2 pi r charge per unit length multiplied by the length of the ring, which is 2 pi r. Okay. So this is going to become k q and q I'm substituting lambda into 2 pi capital R divided by small r square. All right. So let's do the substitution. K we know is 9 into 10 to the power 9. Lambda is 10 nano coulomb per meter. So 10, but multiplied by 10 to the power minus 9 to make it coulomb. Multiplied by 2 into 3.14. Multiplied by capital R is 1 millimeter. So I will substitute 10 to the power minus 3 meter because SI units and divided by small r square, which is 10 square. All right. What are the things that are going to disappear? 10 to the power 9, 10 to the power minus 9 gone. 110 and 110 here gone. So I'm left with 6.28 multiplied by 9 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 4. All right. What is this going to give me? So 9, 8, 72, 9 to 18, 18 and 7 is 25 and 9, 6, 54. So this is 56.52 into 10 to the power minus 4. So if I have to write this properly, I should write 5.65 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 3. What is the unit? The unit is Newton per Coulomb. But if you look at the options, the answer is in milli Newton per Coulomb. So we can simply write it as 5.65 milli Newton per Coulomb. And that is going to be my answer. All right, let's have a look at the options. So option A is going to be the right option. For the given uniformly charged ring, what will be the maximum value of electric field? So we have a uniformly charged ring and we are talking about points on the axis. So at different points, the value of electric field would be different. We need to find out what will be the maximum value of electric field on the axis. All right. So the key concept here is 
that the variation of electric field due to a uniformly charged ring along the axis is shown below. What is it? At the center of the ring, the electric field is zero. And as we move away from the ring, then the electric field increases, reaches a maximum at small r is equal to capital R by root two, and then starts decreasing and then finally becomes zero. Okay, so if this is the ring, and this is the direction we are taking at positive. So electric field is in the positive direction. So we have plotted it above the R axis. But when we go on the opposite side, if we start moving on the opposite side, then the direction of electric field would be like this. Hence, we'll have to take it as negative. But the variation of magnitude is exactly identical. All right. So the magnitude increases up till R by root two and then starts decreasing. But since it is the direction is opposite, we have plotted it on the negative. E axis. All right. But this is the variation. And the important thing is that the maximum electric field is obtained at small r is equal to capital R by root two. All right. So in order to solve this question, what we need to do is this is electric field due to uniformly charging on the axis. Now Q will have to substitute as lambda into two pi r charge per unit length into the length of the ring, which is two pi r. Okay. And here what we need to do is small r is equal to capital R by root two. If we substitute, we'll get the value of maximum electric field. All right. So E is equal to K and Q I can substitute it as lambda into two pi capital R multiplied by small r. I'm going to substitute as R by root two divided by small r square. Small r square will become R square by two. So R square by two plus R square will become three R square by two to the power three by two. All right. Then what do we have? We have K lambda into two pi capital R square. And then we have root two over here. Now R square to the power three by two is going to become R cube. All right. R square to the power three by two. So first take the root, it will become R, then take the cube, it will become R cube. Similarly, three, three to the power three by two is going to become root two to the power three, which is nothing but sorry, root three to the power three and which is nothing but three root three. All right. So what can I do? I can substitute three root three here divided by two root two and this two root two I can send upstairs. Okay. So this root two and this root two gone R square and R square gone. So I am left with four pi K into lambda divided by three root three capital R. This is the value of the maximum electric field. All I need to do is do the substitution. Okay. So this is four pi K lambda divided by three root three capital R. This is E max. All right. So let's start substitution. So this is four into 3.14. What is K? K is nine into 10 to the power nine. What is lambda? Lambda is 30 nano coulomb per meter. So 30 but 10 to the power minus nine to make it coulomb divided by three root three multiplied by capital R capital R given to us is three root three. All right. So we can see that some of the calculation has become very easy. So 10 to the power nine, 10 to the power minus nine gone. And then we have four into 3.14 into nine into 30 here divided by this is going to become nine multiplied by three. So this nine and this nine gone, this three will left with 10. So what we are left with is 31.4 multiplied by four. So this is going to be four, four, 16, four, one, five, four, three, 12. So 12.56 12 or this is going to be four, four, 16, four, one, five, four, three, 12. So 125.6 Newton per Coulomb. That is going to be my answer. Let's have a look at the options. Obviously, we'll go for the closest option. And that is option B, 126 Newton per Coulomb. If the half portion ACB of the uniformly charged ring ADBCA is cut out, then the net electric field due to the remaining half portion at O will be. Okay, so there was a complete ring, but half the ring we have cut off. We want to find out what will be the electric field at this point O. All right. And we have to tell the direction as well. All right. So what is the key concept here? The electric field due to a uniformly charged arc at the center is given by. So this is an arc. This is center. 
Now the electric field is going to have two components, EX like this and EY like this. And when we joined that point with the extreme point of the arc, then we have these angles alpha and theta. If this is the situation, then EX is given as K lambda by R sin alpha plus sin beta and EY is given as K lambda by R cos beta minus cos alpha. It is very similar. The structure of the equation is very similar to that of a line charge at a point which is not on the axis. All right. So also it is very easy to remember. So let's use this to find our answer. Okay. So here I'm saying that this is the direction of EX. I'm taking X axis like this. And this is the direction of EY. All right. So this will become the central line. Then we have to join the points of extremes of the arc. Join the points with the extremes of the arc. So this angle here is going to become alpha. And this angle here is going to become beta. So you see that very clearly that alpha is equal to beta is equal to 90 degree. And all we have to do is make the substitution. Okay. So what is the value of EX? EX is K lambda divided by capital R into sine alpha plus sine beta. Okay, do I need to calculate EY? You know it very well that because this is the symmetric, this is a symmetric situation, the Y components of the electric field are going to cancel themselves out. But if you don't believe me, no worries, I can prove that as well. So this is cos beta minus cos alpha. All right, so let's start substitution for EX. So EX becomes K lambda by R. Now sine alpha is sine 90 degrees one, sine beta again is one. So this becomes two K lambda by R. And what is the direction? The direction is like this. All right, and what about EY? EY will become K lambda by R. Now cos beta is zero, cos 90 degrees zero, minus zero is going to give me zero. So like I said, because of symmetry, the electric field along line AB is going to be zero. So what is the net electric field? 2K lambda by R. And now all we need to do is make the substitution. So two multiplied by K is nine into 10 to the power nine. What is lambda? Lambda here is minus 10 nano coulomb. So this becomes 10 multiplied by 10 to the power minus nine. We're just calculating the magnitude. The sign we'll just talk about it in a minute and divided by capital R. What is the radius? The radius is two. So this two gone, this two gone, this 10 to the power nine, this 10 to the power minus nine gone. So we have 90 Newton per coulomb. Now this is the magnitude of the electric field. But what do we have here is that this is negatively charged. Okay. So we had assumed EX in this direction. But the real thing is that because this is negatively charged, the direction of electric field is towards the negative charge. So the direction of electric field is going to be like this. Okay. So we can calculate magnitude like this, but in order to calculate the direction, it's very easy to see if it is negative charge, the direction is going to be towards the negative charge. Okay. So the direction is OD. All right. So 90 Newton per coulomb and the direction is OD. So let's have a look at the options. So option B is going to be my correct option.